Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to do some calculations using some of the time functions. So to begin with I'm just going to do a very simple explanation about how Excel stores time. So Excel stores times as a number. So as an example if I put the number 1 into a cell and I went up to general and I changed that to format as a date that would show it as the first of the first 1900 now if I over type that with a 2 that just goes up to the second of the first so every date is a number based on that starting point of the first of the first 1900 back on my other worksheet so if I now wanted to work out how many days there were between this start date of the 12th of the 12th and the end date of the 29th of the 12th I could do that simply as taking one number away from another so I can do equals the bigger number which is the newer date in this case minus the smaller number which in this case is the older date and if I get that to show as a result you'll see that is 17 days now what I'm going to do in a few moments is I'm going to work out how many working days there are between those two dates. But before I do that I'm just going to show you a couple of other functions that might be useful to you. So in this column here I'm going to get it to convert this date that we've got here into a number that represents the day of the week that that date falls on. So I'm going to use, in fact I'll go up to the formulas ribbon, in the date and time set of functions there is a function called weekday so with weekday I just need to provide it with the date that I want it to look at and it will return me a number between 1 and 7 now in that formula 1 is Sunday and 7 is Saturday so if I copy that down you'll see I've got numbers 1 through to 7 for the various days that are there alternatively if you'd prefer to see that as a word we can do equals text and I can point it at that cell and then if I put inside the speech marks three D's when I close my bracket that will give me an abbreviation of the day if I add a fourth D in there that will actually give me the full name of the the day so if I again copy that down, you'll see as I said before, 1 is Sunday, and there we go, 7 is Saturday. So if your goal is to record the number of working days between two dates, just taking away the newer date from the older date won't give you that. So within here, what I'm going to use is, and again it's from the date and time functions, is... I'm going to use this function here called network days. Now if I click on that, what I need to provide it with is the start date, which in this case is the 12th of the 12th, and I need to provide it with an end date, which in this case is the 29th of the 12th. Now if I press OK at this point, you will see it returns me 12 days. So if you look, there were 17 originally. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, five six so we've got six days there that are weekends now if I wanted to work out the number of days in between and include any holidays again I can use the network days function so again if I go into the network days I can put my start date in I can put my end date in and then this third optional box can be used to show it the holiday. So I've previously made myself a little calendar here at the side showing that Christmas Day and Boxing Day and the dates that they fall on. So if I highlight those two and I press OK, you'll see the result of this formula gives me two days less. Because it's now included Christmas Day and it's included Boxing Day as a day not to count. Okay guys, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, can you give me a thumbs up? If you 
want to see more videos from me please remember to press the subscribe button and press the notification bell because I plan to put two new videos out every week. Hope to see you in the next video guys. Thank you for watching.